Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the workbench. I got an updated video on gondola dent and ding effects. Uh, and this video is in response to a question someone had asked me about my updated gondola weathering technique. He had recently tried this uh, technique that I had shown in a previous video on one of his cars and he actually damaged uh, his model, which is quite unfortunate. I don't want to see people have, you know, do damage to their own models because I told them that they could try a technique and then they have something like that happen. So I want to be able to update a video here so you guys can see a better technique of doing this without damaging your car, uh, without melting it or doing something like that. Because, you know, you do got to be kind of careful with these cars because they do have a lot of delicate parts and you can easily damage and warp the sides of these. I've done a couple where I've actually damaged them beyond repair too and I've had to unfortunately sell them or scrap them. So I'm going to be doing this video kind of as an update to my previous video on this effect to show you a better way of doing it uh, that will prevent damage to your model. So let's go ahead and get into this. So this is one of my favorite cars to do this technique on. It is an Atlas Colvair Gondola classic car. Uh, these are really great and you can see I've already done one side with this effect and look at that. Look at the warps. The damage. I actually poked some holes in the sides which is cool but you can see that damage. Now there is a, a catch with this. It's that you're going to damage the graphics on the side if you do this extreme panel bulging. Uh, and you will most likely have to replace those decals by scraping them off, repainting those areas, anything like that. But for the most part, I'm not too worried about it on this car because I'm going to be re-decaling it entirely for a different road. Uh, so I'm not too worried about it. But we have a clean side here that we're going to be doing this technique on uh, with some very basic effects. Um, so also, this is not the final effect. This is the base effect. What I'm going to be doing later on will be adding some, uh, basically some scratches and gouges to the sides, and I'll enhance all this with weathering. And I will show you guys an example of one car I finished recently uh, to give you a better idea of what it'll actually look like once you've done all the other weathering steps and stuff to it. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you will need to be able to warp the panels on the sides of these cars is a propane torch, particularly something like this with this kind of nozzle dispenser where you can basically have your lighter and then you have the gas regulator here. Something like this works in particularly well for this. You can use, of course, a butane torch. Those are a little bit nicer because those burn a little bit less hot. This burns very fast, but I like to be able to quickly melt the plastic or soften the plastic and then pull back, as you'll see. I use a pair of scissors as a weight to hold the car down on its side so it doesn't move around. And you're also going to need either napkins or some very absorbent paper towels like these because I'm basically going to use these uh, for something very important, which is basically cooling the sides. So what I do is when I warp the panel out, what I do is I take napkins or tissue paper and I'll put them in between each panel. That way I can work on one individual panel at a time and not melt the areas around it. So you wet your paper towel, you put it inside it, around the area you need to work, and it keeps all the surrounding plastic cool, basically. Now, the other tool I use to do all the very fine bulges and stuff is a dental pick like this. I use this style of dental pick with the uh, curved tip and then the very blunt tip like this. As you can see, it's very sharp. You can get these kinds of tools from Hobby Lobby, Michaels, any kind of good craft store, or you can go and get them on eBay or any other online retailer like that. They're very cheap and affordable, but they're very good tools for this. So I got a bowl of water out here as well, and I've already prepared a couple of napkins. Uh, in this case, to wrap around the side. So here's how I'm going to do this. What I do, take and I dip my napkin in some water like this, and I'm going to be using this piece of tissue for the larger area. So what I'll do, if we flip over to the undone side, I'm going to put it inside the panel like this, and I'm going to align it with that vertical rib, this post here that you can see around that reporting mark. Okay, so like that, and then I'll wrap it around so that it's nice and tight, like that. And if you want to slide it down a little bit so you have a little extra room, uh, you just don't want to go past that rib if you can because you don't want to warp that rib. You want the post to stay as straight as possible. Again, if you can see, the sides are all bulged out on my model, but the ribs, the top cord, everything are as straight as possible. You want to keep that and maintain that. That's very important. If you damage these, it looks toy-like. It looks like you literally put the car in the oven. So this is how we're preventing that from happening. So again, there's that towel in the bottom. Now I'm going to go ahead and set it down. And I'm going to put a weight like this, in this case a pair of scissors. I actually put them like that, that'll work better. And I'm going to take a smaller napkin like this, small strip, and I'm going to try to tuck it in that corner. 
and I have my pick here for this. I'm going to take it and I'm going to tuck it in that corner like that. Just like that. I just kind of guide it. Again, I'm just trying to keep it aligned with that vertical post. Now, what I'm going to do, I got one more strip. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on that top cord and lean it in just a little bit and overlap it just a little bit over that panel again for a little extra insurance to make sure that we don't melt that top cord. Again, I want to preserve that top cord. I don't want that to get damaged. So if I take my camera off the tripod and we get in here, this is what this is going to look like. Notice you have that completely exposed area for the torch and notice how it's completely aligned with those ribs. And we want to bulge out this entire area as best as we can here. With my pick in hand and ready to go, I'm going to take my torch, we're going to turn it on. There we go. I'm going to kick that heat back. Notice that point on the torch. Ouch. You see that? It's pretty fine, but it's pointed enough that it'll aim directly for that uh, panel and we can work it over very quickly. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in and I'm going to hit that entire area up going back and forth. Now this is going to heat very quick, okay? Be very careful. Pull back. As soon as you start seeing that plastic warp a little bit, matter of fact in that case that was a little too much, uh, but you can see it's starting to warp a little bit. Go in there with that pick very quickly. Start working in that area. Work around that rib and bend that plastic out. Okay, just like this. Notice I'm going around and I'm poking it as I go to make sure I'm forcing all that out. You can use the blunt end of the tool again like this if you need to to continually work that plastic out. Now this is going to very quickly start to set up and what you can do is then take it over like this. Notice that bulge. Alright, and I'm going to continue to work that plastic out just a little bit just like that using this end pushing it out and just like that it's all set up and we have our first dent one more here as a quick reference you go in hit that entire area move keep moving don't sit in one area keep moving pull back quickly very quickly you can see that plastic starting to warp. It's starting to move by itself. That's when you know it's ready. Go in there and start manipulating it. Start moving it. Force it down. It'll do what you want it to do, but you've got to work with it. Push it out. Notice I'm getting, I'm using that blunt end of the tool. That top might need another little hit. There we go. Again, force it out. Force it out. Just like that. Nice. Push that top area again. I'm going to hit that top up just a little bit more because I know for a fact that's probably not going to be bent out just enough. But you can do this pretty lightly too if you need to. It just depends on the prototype. But I'm modeling some cars that are very, very well used as you can <laughs> probably imagine. So again, push it out. Take that weight off. Look at it. One end, pick end, push it out. Now, notice the randomness of those bulges because we're using this pick to push those panels out as we melt them. Notice that. That's very prototypical because that's how the panels bow. It's multiple dents that eventually force that sheet metal out. And again, no top core damage, no handrail damage. The ribs are all perfectly straight. The bottom cord, the bottom uh, reinforcing rib is not bent as well. This is the technique in a nutshell. This is how it should be done if you're going to do it this way. It's very easy uh, once you get the hang of it, but you do need to be patient. You need to be able to be kind of careful. If you want to try this on a scrap car, it's a piece of junk or whatever, something with soft pr uh, plastic, anything like that, even a piece of styrene, if you want to just practice on a, a thicker piece of styrene, to replicate a car side, you can do that and just practice and just get a feel for what the heat's going to do. Once you know what it's going to do, once you know how you're going to be able to use your tools, then you can translate it to a model if that 
helps you out. But that's just going to be a little bit of a guideline. So I'll go ahead and finish this up and we'll come back and look at the car. And then we'll zoom in on our example of a finished model so you guys can see what this uh, effect looks like once everything is enhanced. Here's the finished side. So if we look down the side of the car, no warpage on the top cord, no warpage on the bottom. Nothing on the end is damaged, but we have that nice warped panel effect with the cost of just damaging the uh, factory printing, which is easy, uh, easily replaced. There's all those individual little dents I was talking about. That's what's nice about that pick, you can do all those. Some pretty big ones in the corner here. Most of the time on the ends, you don't see too many dents on that last panel there. Uh, but you can add them if you need to, but you're going to have to be a little bit more careful. Especially with the plastic parts there, you're going to have to make sure those are covered up with some wet towels as well. Uh, on the ends, it's pretty much the same procedure. You can just insert your paper towels on this corner around that wall on that seam and then you just go in and then just carefully hit the top, but only that top panel. So only this portion where the data is. This part down here doesn't warp as badly. Plus, you don't want to damage that center rib there. Uh, you can do it, but it's a little bit more tricky. Uh, but that's just a little word of caution there. Uh, and again, you can just go pretty crazy on this. Uh, you can see on this corner, I really hit this side up based on a photo. And I actually tore through the plastic on purpose to model some of these um, areas where some metal was damaged. So that's pretty cool. And then if you actually look in the center of the car, again, it's, it's pretty realistic because you get all the individual dents. And you can see where the area on the reinforcing rib isn't touched, which is pretty uh, pretty cool. It's prototypical like that. Alright, so that's the technique. Let's go ahead and look at a completed model and wrap up this video. Here's a car I actually completed and you can see once I've done all of my gouging and scratching effects on the sides and then enhanced everything with oils and powders, it looks pretty good. It's a very convincing way to model these dents without having to completely rebody the sides. Uh, though that is another way you can do that, but it is a little bit more time consuming. This is a little bit simpler, and you can see it looks really good. Uh, the top cord is bent up a little bit on this one, but that's just because the prototype had a little bit of damage on the top there, so it's prototypically accurate. But again, that's just a cool little technique you can try on your gondolas, and hopefully that inspires you to give it a go. It actually is relatively easy once you get the hang of it, guys, I'm telling you. Uh, but that'll wrap it up for now. Uh, be sure to leave comments below if you have any questions. I'll do my best to get back to you on them. And subscribe here on YouTube for more content, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Take it easy.